Hi, this is Joe Fling right here, and I'm with, what's your name? Uh, my name is Brian Patterson. I've been uh, associated with Buck Leonard since 2003. Uh, the league has gone through uh, changes, has grown um, a bit, and uh, it's a great thing going out here today. Uh -huh. So what's happening today? Uh, we've got the, uh, the division for the 11 to 13 year olds playing. Mm -hmm. um, this is our competitive league, our little league division. Mm -hmm. um, this particular division, a couple years ago, uh, sent an all-star team to Arizona mm -hmm. uh, to participate in the all-star weekend. So okay. this is one of our pivotal divisions right here. Okay. Yeah. And um, what are you guys doing for the kids? We, uh, well, you know, it's a this combination of uh, community, uh, uh, mentor, uh, community service. And, yeah, and also uh, inaugurating them into the game of baseball, which teaches uh, teamwork and leadership skills, things of that nature. Who is Buck Leonard? Uh, Buck Leonard is a Hall of Famer, played in the Negro Leagues, uh, first base uh, for the Homestead Grays, uh, one of the all-time best. Was selected as top 100 players of all time. That's major leagues and Negro leagues. So he was a phenomenal player. Okay. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Hey, How you doing, JJ? Hey, doing good. Can you tell me who Buck Leonard is? No. Buck Leonard was a great baseball player. He started out here in Rocky Mountain, one of the greatest baseball players ever to play the game. Uh -huh. He played in the Negro Leagues from uh -huh. 1937 to 1945. They won nine straight championship games. Uh -huh. And he was the only baseball player to ever play 17 years straight for a team. He played for the Homestead Grays from 19. 33, 34 until 1950. Mm -hmm. He started out here playing in the Sandlocks, and then he went up to Virginia and started playing in Virginia and uh, semi-pro. Then he got famous in 1933 when he played for the Brooklyn Royal Giants, and he was known for his batting prowess. He batted uh, 500 at the age of 30 and batted 400 at the age of 40. And he won nine straight championships between 1937 and 1945 and played with a great baseball player by the name of Josh Gibson. They were known as the Thunder Twins. Mm -hmm. in nature. And after he finished playing baseball, he came back here, became a manager uh, for the uh, Carolina Leagues, a team called the Rocky Mountain Leafs. He's a vice president in the Carolina Leagues and he also had a real estate company. And he was a well-rounded man, you know. He had a real estate company and he was a devout Christian. And his personality was uh, stellar off of the field as well as his batting prowess and his play on the field. He was a first baseman and he was just an all-around great baseball player and all-around great man, well-rounded, very uh, multi-dimensional. He liked fishing, he liked hunting, and he liked helping out children. He was a true officer when he came back from the Negro Leagues and things of this nature. And he was big on education, educating the kids. But he didn't really get a full education himself because when he was coming up in school, they didn't have a high school here in Rocky Mount. So he had to stop playing, uh, stop going to school at the age of eighth grade, and, and after the eighth grade, and start working. And he worked as a shoe shine, and he worked in a hosiery mill, and he helped support his family until he went up to play in the Negro Leagues at the age of 25 or 26 years old. But uh, he was a really great baseball player and a really uh, great person. So he was a renaissance man? Oh yeah, he was a renaissance man in the ultimate sense. A way around him, a man, real in front of me, I would say, yes, sir. Where did he come from? Well, he was born here in Rocky Mountain in 1907. And, uh, you know, his family came out of Castalia. His uh, father worked for the railroad. His mother was a housewife, but his father died in 1919 
with uh, from the uh, TV to Brooklyn Loki it was, was really bad back then. And uh, after the funeral, his mother came up to him. Since he was the oldest boy, he recognized that he would have to, uh, well, his mother told him that he would have to, after he finished school, he would have to start working and to help support the family. And that's what he did. So at the age of 11, uh, Buck Leonard stood to the, plate, to the plate for his family and started working as a shoe shine, working in hosiery mill, working in the railroad, working in the railroad for about seven years until the depression hit. It wasn't for the Great Depression, Buck Leonard probably would have never went up to a, uh, to the Negro Leagues because when the Depression hit, it wasn't that many jobs around here and they laid them off and uh, somebody saw him playing in the sandlots and he got a call to come up to Virginia to play baseball for the Portsmouth Firefighters and then to the Baltimore Stars and then to the Brooklyn Royal Giants and finally in 1934 he went to the Homestead Grays where he stayed until 1950 until when the Negro League disbanded and he landed in the Hall of Fame in 1972 with uh, Josh Gibson. So you know a lot about Buck Leonard. What are you, some kind of like archivist or something? Well, uh, I'm, a, I'm a grandson, so I'm the grandson, so I know a lot about him. Then you know, I went, I read a lot of books about him. I went to college and I studied a lot of things about the Negro League. So you can't say I'm somewhat well versed in the Negro League history and uh, Buck Leonard. Cause Buck Leonard sat down and talked to me a lot about life. Uh -huh. Things in days he felt like I had it made because a lot of things uh, in his society and his when he was growing up was blocked from him. But uh, when segregation was uh, dismantled and somewhat in my generation, he felt like I had more opportunities to do things that he didn't have to do. Right, Jerry, come on, so he would sit down and talk to me and tell me about life patient. and tell me about a lot of the things he went through uh, in the Negro Leagues and uh, during his time of growing up here in Rocky Mountain and up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and this nature like that. He played for the Homestead Grays, which is a small city right out of Pittsburgh, right out, on the outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Go ahead, on. And, uh, man, uh, what else can I say about it? I mean, uh, he, well, I, I want to really emphasize that, you know, his behavior off the field was, uh, was really good. He was a devout Christian, and he was known for his batting prowess. And uh, he had, uh, he won several batting titles. And, uh, you know, batting 400 and 500 is unheard of. The, the average, the batting average in the uh, major league right now is 260, 200, I mean 260, and he batted like 400. What does 80. that mean to bat 400? Like, it means that you get a hit 40% of the time. Okay. And if you bat 500, it means you get a hit 50% of the time. So the bat, Buck Leonard go to bat 10 times, he get five hits. Oh, I see. If, if you go to bat four times, he get four hits. And he did that, you know, uh, for a lot for a lot of years. Not only that, he was a treasurer. He was the team captain. He was the crowd favorite. I mean, when he came to the plate, I mean, up in Kaminsky Park, it was, it was like 60,000 people coming to see the All Star Game. The, the crowd would go wild when he would come up to plate, and they just liked his character. They just he had something about him. He had a, a personality that you had know, charisma. Yeah, yeah, charisma. That's the word. He had a charismatic personality, and uh, he was a uh, he was a great all around guy. You would like to be around, jovial. Okay and highly intelligent, you know. You talk to him, he knew about a lot of different things, you know. And if, for someone with an eighth grade education, you know, he, he had, he had a, a knowledge of someone like a PhD or even higher than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess you're proud to be a part of his family. Oh yeah, I'm proud to be a part of this family. I'm proud to be a part of this legacy. And my mother, uh, which is his daughter, started this league about 12 years ago. And you know, she did it as a philanthropy. She didn't go into it for economic factors. She went into it with a right mindset to help help the kids, to help kids that are underprivileged or under underserved, and uh, you know she does a, did a lot of great things for this community and did a lot of things for Rocky Mountain. This league is growing and growing. Now is they go, they used to go all over the state. Now they're going all over the country. And now it's talking about going international, like places like Paris. <laughs> Learn about Buck Leonard, and you know they have leagues uh, and tournaments in California. Have tournaments in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know Florida, all over the country. Virginia. At the end of this month, we're going to be going to Virginia to uh, celebrate a, a championship. A Black World Series championship for children, so it's a beautiful thing, you know, and, and it, it, it's helping out the community and, uh, and giving the kids something to do and keeping them out of trouble, which is the main purpose. That's very good. That's a very positive goal, isn't it? Yes, it is. I really, I'm really proud of my mother and I'm proud of my grandfather's legacy, and I get happy just talking about it. <laughs> and I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come on, better up. They shot. Come on. Daddy's coach, Daddy, why I picked that one in the dirt? Oh, yeah. oh, oh.
Come on, Dyson, get your good hit. Come on, Dayshawn. Come on, baby, get you one. Get your hit. All right. And you've got the Brooklyn Royal Giants playing the Kansas City somebody's. Uh, Brooklyn Royal Giants are winning right now, five to two, top uh -huh. of the fifth. Um, trying to get the game in for the storm comes. So it's coming. Okay, are there your kids out there? I do. My son plays second base. He oh, what's is, his name? Say his hey to him. Is, hey, Ty. <laughs> his name is Ty Shank. He's 13 years old. Uh, how'd you find out about this this league? Um, Ty is a club member down at the Boys and Girls Club, and he um, was junior youth of the year for the National Edgecombe County Boys and Girls Club, and uh -huh. he knows Coach Joe. Hey. Yeah, you can't do that. Actually, that. That's you ready? Yeah. All right.